Well, thank you, Professor Fath. I'm looking forward to jumping in. Uh, Dr. Katzmeyer, thank you also, uh, both of you, for inviting me to address this influential group of the ecologists and environmentalists and others interdisciplinary. It is indeed an honor to do so in this city that gave the world so many eminent thinkers. Ladies and gentlemen, day by day, it grows increasingly obvious that our current lifestyle is not sustainable. Business as usual will eventually lead to disaster, but it is hardly clear how humanity should respond to this crisis. How do we reform ourselves into a sustainable society? Now in our quest for sustainability, it is only natural to start with actions at an immediate and even a personal level, such as curtailing consumption, reusing or recycling resources, etc. And such measures are critically important, to be sure. Today, however, I wish to direct our attention about sustainability towards the larger scale and to inquire whether the very organization of our society and its economy plays any part in how humanity might persist over the centuries to come. Towards that end, I wish to invoke a metaphor, the network as metaphor, that although very familiar to many of us, nevertheless exhibits some properties that remain largely unconsidered. As Gregory Bateson often complained, the science we apply to our problems is an overwhelmingly positivistic endeavor. That is, we focus, focus almost exclusively upon the laws and constraints that guide how events transpire. We are quick to ignore the noise and the exceptions that accompany regular behavior. In physics, departures from our obsession with positivism are rare. The Pauli exclusion principle, von einem eingeborenen Wiener formuliert, and Heisenberg's uncertainty number among them. It is only natural then that upon encountering a network, we immediately focus upon the constraints that it portrays. Generally, from any node of a network, one can usually not reach all the other nodes directly. One is constrained, often for unspecified reasons, from doing so. So apparent is this aspect of constraint that a colleague of mine once proclaimed within my hearing that networks are deterministic structures, a remark that elicited from me immediate and vociferous and loud no. Networks are explicitly indeterminate in general. From any node in a network, there are usually links to several other subsequent nodes. Now conventionally, in deference to a common faith in the lawfulness of natural events, one speaks euphemistically and epistemically about one's uncertainty as to what the next link will be. But without ignoring or abrogating any universal law, arguments have been made by individuals such as Peirce, Popper, auch ein heimischer Wiener, Elsasser, Kaufmann, and myself, that universal laws remain insufficient to impose determinacy upon systems that are heterogeneous, dense, and significantly interacting. Networks exhibit indeterminacy, period, Schluss. In my opinion, there is no avoiding this reality. However, I find most would rather close an eye to this inconvenient ontology, a behavior which in my own field of ecosystem science, I have lamented as one-eyed ecology. Indeterminacy is the absence of determinacy, which places it outside the orbit of positivist endeavors. Nonetheless, I would argue that absence can be signified and even quantified, and that doing so could lead to significant new insights and novel methodologies. Terence Deacon, for example, described the flood of advances in mathematics that followed upon the ninth century invention of the number zero as a positional number. 